One of the speakers or one of the channels or viewers or gurus that I watch when I'm out for runs is Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, if you actually go to my site, One Rental at a Time, you will see under product recommendations that uh, one or two of his books I highly recommend. Uh, so what I've asked Melino Mike to do is go out and get a Gary V video so we can react to talk about it. Because again, I believe uh, Gary V is about building the biggest thing. He's not about doomers and tearing things down. He doesn't want to bring others down. He wants to build out, lead with kindness forward. So uh, I appreciate everything Gary V does. So when it comes to Gary Vee and the videos that are out there, the tough thing is that there's so many videos that are already cut down into little 30 second excerpts, just packed full of good information. So when I look at a 25 minute video and I'm trying to pull out the best minute and a half worth of clips, I mean, it's just boom, boom, boom. So we got about a minute and a half. Gary Vee couple, covers a couple of different topics and we'll just opine on them on the back end. What the world hasn't figured out yet is living within one's means is the only thing one needs to do to eliminate the anxiety associated with their fee. The amount of people I know that make $283,000 a year and stress about money every day is staggering. But the economy right now is much stronger than it was in 2008 and nine. It's much stronger than it was in the late 90s. Like, you know, like, it's much stronger. So yeah. you don't want to get caught in the delusion of like what's happening, which is everyone's lost context of a 50 year window. Like, mm. yes, if you compare it to four years ago, it's harder, but yeah. it's way easier than it was in 2008 and nine. It got real bad. What is something that um, most people at this, time, this day and age is like kind of blind to? So, like something that you're seeing that's obvious to you, but that other people are just not seeing at the moment. That people's entitlement is destroying their happiness. I just don't understand how we got into this place where everyone thinks everyone owes them something. I promise you this, you're not coming to my funeral because I made $1.7 trillion in my career. You're coming to my funeral because I might have made you $1,700 more and tweaked you in a place where you had 49 more years of happiness. And what I want to do for a living is build organizations, build companies, create commerce, be a salesman, be a, uh, a guidance counselor, HR character, social commentate and put out content. The problem young entrepreneurs, especially when you're a young entrepreneur, is people want stuff, right? They want the bling bling here, right? They want the cool ass kicks, they want the car, they want the jet, not the jets. They want stuff, I don't want stuff. I want the sweat and the pain and the gratitude and the uh, you know happiness that comes along with the work. I want the work. I don't want the stuff. All right, so he uh, he covered a bunch of topics there. We have living within your means, get a little bit of perspective about the economy. Yeah, it's tougher than it was a few years ago, but it's way easier than it's been in the past. Entitlement is destroying your happiness. Uh, and lastly, people are going to come to his funeral because he helped them, not just because he made a bunch of money. So Mike, which one of those do you want to yeah, talk about I, I, first? I think we just go in the order. Or actually, I love Gary Vee so much. I took time to take notes, and I actually got a fourth one there. He talks about doing the work, or the fifth one, doing oh, the work. Right, right. Um, so I agree with living below your means. I mean, I, I, I've just recently, probably in the last ninety days, put together a formula to getting wealthy. Real quick, uh, creating more dry powder, discretionary income, whatever you call that. That is, that's living below your means. You either increase your means, or cut expenses, or do both. That's where it all starts. That is the kindling that becomes a roaring forest fire. It's, it is that simple. Mm -hmm. And almost nobody wants to do it. Second, I invest, invested before, during, and after the 08 crisis. I know today feels bad. And if this is your first recession, I get it. I understand. It's not even close. It's not even close <laughs> to what that was. Let's let's just get that out of the way right here, right now. It's not that it's not going to be bad. It's just not 08, 09. So don't get it twisted. Mm -hmm. Second, in, I love that entitlement question. Man, how many people are whining because life isn't fair? Mm -hmm. I mean, how many people got used to eighth place trophies and they just whine and they're not doing the work? I mean, man, it's exhausting. Then uh, talking about a funeral, I think that's a great one. Um, 
I think that's the measure of a man, right? Do you live the world better than you are? That's what I'm striving for. Again, I'm now trying to create a legacy that outlives me by 50 years. I might even change it to 100 years. That's what drives me every day. That's what drives me to create live content five days a week. Uh, and then finally, it is all about doing the work. It is that simple. Mm -hmm. You want to become known or good at something? You want to change your financial future? Do the work. I mean... I have an amazing course that is ridiculously cheap for $3.99 that goes step by step by step that's helped thousands of people and you're not plucking down 400 bucks. You don't have 400 bucks. I got a $47 buy box video that you're just foolish if you don't buy. People just want everything on, on a silver platter these days and I just don't get it. You know, I think uh, people do need to take buying your course seriously because every time we talk, I tell Mike that he needs to increase the price to a thousand bucks. I've had a lot of people reach out to me and ask me to review their courses, big YouTubers like Chandler, David Smith, um, and their stuff is priced much higher. And I tell Mike all the time, bro, you're giving it away. Like, <laughs> You need to take that price up. So that, yeah, if that's not motivation to, to buy it, I don't know what is. But um, living within your means... Which one of your millionaires does not have that as a part of their story? Every single millionaire I've ever talked to, the ones that come back repeatedly, the ones that are featured on my website, one rental at a time, all talk about, they talk about living within your means and expanding your means. Now they may have those orders different, right? Some of them are like expand your means first, you know, cut expenses, needs versus wants, all of that, but they all talk the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's foundational. It is my conversations with millionaires the last five years, 10,000 plus videos that I'm like, that's step one to getting wealthy. I don't care if you're an 18 year old high school graduate or a 50 year old mid-level manager. It's the same process. You have to create kindling, dry powder, stacks, whatever you want to, whatever your choice word is. That is the kindling. Until you have kindling, you can't create a fire. Until you have a fire, you can't create a forest fire. It's just how it works, man. It's just, it's step one. Yeah. I think, you know, if every single millionaire is saying the exact same thing, you have to live within your means and not ball out, not be a stimulus baller, not, not in, indulge yourself. You know I mean? I, I have to sit down there and as I'm driving around with my son in one crappy car to the next, and he's like, we, every time we pull into a Costco, every time we pull into Walmart, dad, don't you wish you had that truck? Dad, don't you like that blue truck over there? Wow. Look at that. I'm like, listen, you little bum. Okay. <laughs> this is a fundamental lesson that you need to learn right now. I'm going to, on principle, even though I can afford nice cars, I'm never buying a nice car. I'm never putting you in a nice car because I'm concerned for you right now. You're too obsessed with them. You have to start and live beneath your means. I could go out and buy a Tesla if I wanted to, but I don't because I'd rather buy freaking rental properties. Um, and then, yeah, getting things into perspective, you know, it is, it is, it's, it's a fair argument for people that are Gen Z and younger uh, millennials to be like, oh my God, this is the end of time. Well, because the last 12 years have been pretty good and this is the first bad thing they've seen, but yeah, step back. This is the constant argument that we have with the crash bros all the time who are like, oh, wow, the market's going to everything. Okay. But like, take a look at the 52 year spreadsheet and what the historical data shows and what the precedent is for what's occurred in the past. You're making wrong predictions. This isn't going to be what's happened before, but they just don't want to look at it. They just want to focus now, 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 now it's foolish. Well, here's the deal with the crash bros and frankly, doomers in general, I'm now call everybody doomers. Uh, dooming doomers is a big business. I have this thing called vidIQ, which I can go out and look at YouTube channels and get the data behind them. Doomers are a big business. There are people on, on YouTube that are without question 100% doomers making 50, 80, $100,000 a month. None of their videos are action oriented. All the doomers want to get you to do is sit on the couch and watch another video. The only person being helped by the Doom videos is the content creator. Wake up, people. They don't care about you. They don't care about you. They are addicted to the AdSense revenue. They, they're not talented at anything else except spreading Doom. That's why channels like yours, mine, others, they don't grow as fast. Because what do we do? We talk about doing the work. Who the hell wants to do work? They want to get stimulus checks. And go buy, you know, fancy kicks with free money. Mm -hmm. it's, it's okay. It's all right. It's just, it's reality.
part of getting out of the financial matrix is recognizing that you're in the matrix altogether. The world around you isn't real, that it's been pulled over your eyes. And human beings have a natural proclivity towards negativity bias. This is why in every newsroom, they have the saying, if it bleeds, it leads. That's why I can be as a police officer out at a horrific crash and the news cameras show up and the helicopters are overhead and we all better have our hats on and our vests on because we don't want to get caught on TV, not in proper uniform in a major crash scene. If it bleeds, it leads. And that's why their channels are so successful because you, me, and everybody else has a natural proclivity to preference negative information that could hurt us as opposed to positive information that could help us. For whatever reason, that's how we've evolved. And yeah, you see it, it played out. Every single day on YouTube, because as you mentioned, our channels, to, you write it, you make a video about helping someone, 2,500 views. You make a video about don't get screwed over, the end of the world's coming, 25 million views. Very tough battle to fight. Yeah, and the only thing that's going to stop doomers on YouTube is if you stop watching them. You have to block them. That's the only thing that's going to work. There are pe there are channels where you can, uh, and you know you have a doomer channel if you go to their thumbnails and every thumbnail is the same. It's all doom, doom. All you can do is block them, folks. I know a lot of you tell me, Michael, I watch it for unbiased. It's not unbiased. They're not trying to help you. They're really not. They're trying to get paid. They are trying to create a flock of sheep, and they're feeding the flock of sheep shit. And they'll just keep doing it until you stop watching. All right, Mike. Well, that's what we have for Gary V. We still got Ken McElroy and Cody Sanchez coming up next, so we'll see you there. Awesome.